Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Tara, and we are going to talk about our boys, chapter four. It's not, Ooh. It's not chapter four, it's chapter six. I god damn it. I remember <laughs> not to say season and then I said the wrong goddamn episode number. It is chapter six, Acceptance of <laughs> Silence is the title of the episode. Which of course relates mostly to Avishy, who's still in his acceptance, he's been arrested. He's in an interrogation room where he spends all the episode basically outside of the ending where he leaves uh all the episode and most of this episode i would say is around talking to him and trying to make him talk uh because this is a, a little filmmaking touch that i really liked about this is that it never even though we see them in the control room you know the surveillance room looking at the monitors for the other two for you know yosef and the other uh you know nephew it mm. never we never squint to the room with them we never go in and actually hear them speaking all we hear is what comes over the comms we hear them talking about what's happened already in those rooms we never go into those rooms the only room that we ever go in as the audience is avishes so uh and forgive me i'm sick so if i make any unfortunate noises i apologize in advance i will try my best to keep it to a minimum uh for once it's not me sniffing into the microphone i know oh god how do you do it tara how do you do it uh so um that's been a really good episode, I thought, because it was so focused and it was so mm -hmm. revolving around the one idea of can we get uh, Avishay to talk. It, interesting that when he does kind of eventually talk, we don't get to see it. We They're actually holding us in suspense until next episode to see what he says on the the recreation, the reenactment, sorry. Right. We see the first thing that he says and then it cuts away. Yeah, we, we hear him just say, say, the one sentence we hear him say uh to his therapist which is a big part of the plot is that he he did not murder anyone he finally says that that's the first real thing he says uh so yeah so early on the episode uh simon or sorry we got a comment last episode about mispronouncing simon's name um, and obviously we're seeing the spelling we're just saying simon because it looks like simon and part of the reason why that it's not that i didn't notice that they were saying it a little bit differently it's more that I was worried that trying to imitate how they were saying it would come off just sound like a bad impression. I think they're saying Simon. I I don't have an ear for Hebrew. I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and I'm worried that me saying Simon every time is is offensive. <laughs> so I don't want to do it. So I'm going to keep calling him Simon, but that's why. Is I'm just calling yeah. him something that's safe. Um, and if people could you know correct me or tell me that's right and I should be saying that, sure. But it feel, I, I feel like I'm doing a bad impression so he comes in uh there's another person with him for a little bit but he comes in takes the cuffs off and tries to talk to him and explains like i know you feel betrayed because i tricked you i conned you by pretending to be someone that you could trust and i understand that you're upset but here's the thing i don't think you did this i don't think you've got it in you to actually murder someone i think you might have been there i think you might know what happened but every mm -hmm. time, every second that you don't say something and the others are starting to break, you're going to go th throw under the bus for this, at least equally to them, if not more so, because they're the ones doing all the talking. Uh, right. Even even though we know that they're not really talking that much, because like otherwise all these tactics wouldn't be happening to try and get Avisha to talk. Uh, so yeah, well, I mean, we sort of see through the camera that we see um, uh, the main guy, the older one, Joseph. Joseph, yeah, we we see him talking but he's just rambling going on and on and on and his story is inconsistent and that's that's all we really know and uh it's because he's just nervous and he just can't stop he can't stop talking yeah uh whereas obviously avishe has got the silence thing going on and he just sits there and simon gets this idea of like contacting the therapist and he, he does uh and asks her to come down to this this prison that they've got him at and she's very nervous about this. I mean, she 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 thinks she's got an appointment with Avishay. She doesn't know he's been arrested yet. And she goes for mm -hmm. that appointment first. And she actually sees uh, the rabbi. Uh, not his father, but one of the rabbis uh, that we met before. I think it's Yosef's... It's his grandfather, I think. I think it's Yosef's dad. Uh, who's yeah. there with another uh, rabbi who's there for, for treatment. And... There's a little detail there where he... He asked uh, that she not reveal that he recommended Avishay to, to her. Uh, which she right. agrees to although it's interesting at this point like the police already know like they already know uh what you know what's going on there in that sense but 
when she goes down, I thought this was where the episode got really interesting for me, is that she brought her husband, and her husband was insistent that he go with her, and they were making sure, because she's genuinely worried that if she goes in there and gets questioned, that she may not come back out. She's worried, she, she thinks this is like a, almost like a Gestapo level uh, kind of thing, where they'll just hold her and not let her go. Right, well, I mean, we've seen before her hostility towards uh, Simon's character, because he is part of he he's trying to look for guilt and anything that she says could be taken that way even if it's yeah. not admission so she she doesn't like cooperating because she knows they're just gonna cherry pick what they need from whatever she says but i think it also maybe tells us how the, how they are seen by the public uh the, how, how yeah. the places like this prison are seen by, by everyone else like they're seen as this kind of uh totalitarian sort of idea yeah where, well, this is not the police, though, right? This is, uh, is it Shabbat? It's called. Oh, sure, yeah. Well, I was thinking specifically this, uh, like, because they're at like a prison. This is not. They're not at like like their station or whatever. They're at. Uh, this, That's true. Yeah. That's this big prison place, and yeah, it's Shabbat. Like, so, it was making me think that okay, so maybe this is a repetition they have this idea, even though we see them like you know on one of our plots like fighting to try and get an, uh, a confession before the lawyers came in they are still mm -hmm. adhering to to civil rights but uh, that is not the reputation they have the reputation they have is the same way the fact that hussein thinks that they don't treat the case properly even though we've seen simon and, and co treat it like the big case that it is and mm -hmm. focus on it so it's the idea that there's all these reputations that they have uh, and how that is differ differs from what we've actually seen with them but yeah, well, it's all about perspective anyway, right? Like, we don't... I mean, to Hussein, he's been out of the loop for everything. So the only information he's really getting is just these little bits and pieces. And, like, even when he's confronted with the, the fact that we do have people in custody, like, he's upset that he doesn't know about it. And, he, I mean, he gets all his information from an angry mob. So, you know, he has to fill in the blanks with, with whatever he can get, and it's, uh... Maybe, maybe I'm being cold here, but, like, isn't that, like, how it should work, though? Like, it shouldn't, the police shouldn't be telling the, the victim's family. True, but family, if you don't trust the police anyway... Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a reason why you don't just tell them when you think you've got someone, because you get their hopes up. Like, you wait until you know. You wait until you have someone that, like, you know, like, it, it just, it feels like that's the way it should be done, to, to an extent, but... Yeah, I know, but then you're constantly being surrounded by people who are telling you that the police lie and oh, sure, they don't yeah. care about you because you're not Israeli. So, but no, so this, this was really interesting for me because this was like her hesitation to go in. And then when Simon talks to her, he, you know, he, he he's talking about Avishai and how he's silent and how they've got him linked to this and asks her genuine, do you think he could have done this? And she says, no, I don't think he's got that in him. Like, Yosef, if he has done it, Yosef must have, like, talked him into it or, you know, forced him into it. And Simon's like, yeah, honestly, I actually agree. I don't think he has it in him, but he's not talking. Yeah. He's taking this, this... I think uh, you could tell that from the the other episode, or the last one at least, too, where he's just yeah. like, I don't have enough. Like, I don't think it's him. And right. I think he sees a lot of, like, his own struggles with... Or just, like, his own growing up and how important that... Yeah, because we've seen that he's uh, not like. Who is for him? Yeah, he's not like super religious. We've seen that with with Simon. No, but his his family obviously is because his brothers are. Rabbi, oh, he's not exactly so... exactly. So the idea that Av Avishai is... he's definitely had that path before, where he's just like, do I do what my brother does, or do I go my own way? Yeah, I'm exactly. The, the idea that the idea that Avishai is also going through the same struggle, where he's clearly at a crossroads, where he doesn't know if he wants to go down this path. And right. Simon can see that and he can recognize it and relate to it. And he him knows that that is the biggest struggle that, like a kid his age, is go can go through. So any kind of anxiety that he's feeling is, you know, in theory that's that's enough. Like that's enough of a reason for him to go through that. Yeah. So he he says like he's taking this acceptance of silence, and even though he's still allowed under this this vow to write things down, he's not doing it. And yes, Tara's cat's doing something off camera, and I can see her smiling at him. Oh my god, he's so funny right now. <sighs> but he's like, I want you to speak to him, and she's like, I don't want to interrogate him. He's like, No, I'm not asking you to, and we can't watch. Like it's you know, like we, we can't watch this. I just want you to talk to him. I want you to like get him into a better state of mind. I want you to help him. 
and she's very hesitant she doesn't want to do it and it's not until she talks to her husband who kind of like hey it's still patient you know doctor confidentiality they can't watch they can't listen and you want to help him you believe that he didn't do this and he he needs help like and we we know she yeah. cares about him everything we've seen with her and her patients and especially with avishy has definitely shown us that she does care about him you know whenever she's phoned her whenever we've seen her with him it's always felt that way yeah and her husband came off so like assertive at first and aggressive that i thought that he wasn't going to take their side at all on this like i thought he was going to be an antagonist to them the whole time but but really he's the reason that she goes in like to to talk to avishay and get him to break his silence for his own sake you know she's there yeah. to treat him not to and that, that's not seen... to help him confess just to help him be in the right state of mind to save himself yeah that scene um is the best scene in the episode where she comes in and talks to him it's this one extended sequence essentially uh, as I think it was. If it was cut in two, I, I don't remember it being cut, but I know it was. It was because uh, it was when she pulled out the book, there was a cut there, and it came back after she'd already written a bunch mm. of stuff. But, uh, you know, she goes in and she sits down and she brings him, like, a drink, which he gulps down entirely in one go, and <laughs> she's brought in, like, a pad and some pens and she wants to, like, do some exercises. Clearly things she's done with him in the past. There's, you know, it's this little We've diagram. We've seen it, too. She does yeah. the, air, the arrow... The yeah. depression at how much percent and anxiety at how much percent and what's your like first thought or something that comes to your mind well if the person she's treating is like really like insecure about math and you're asking them for percentages and you're like oh just don't ask me for percentages <laughs> does she have like an alternate system six thousand percent anxiety right now because i hate that <laughs> does, does she switch to like a, a letter grading system or it is most anxious <laughs> and F is not anxious at all. Uh, but <laughs> no, just just pondering. Uh, but no, I love the acting in this scene because Avishay does not say anything. Uh, obviously, until the very end of the second part of the scene, where he just reacts. And as she talks to him about how he is, about the pressures that he's going through, that, that she doesn't want to pressure him into going back to the school or anything like that, that she's there for him. At one point, he breaks down crying, and it was a great performance. That's when she brings up the school. Yeah, that's when he bring when he starts crying. Um, so I think he already knows at this point that he's not going to go, that he can't, that he's going to disappoint his family and not go. Mm. And he says also that he doesn't deserve to live, and he wants to kill himself. That's like the first thing he says, or he. Right, so right. We don't, yeah, we don't hear this from the first. The first thing he says is that he's not a murderer; that he didn't murder anyone, right. um, which is a big deal because it's like the whole idea of her coming in is to get him to speak, not to get a confession per se, mm -hmm. but to get him to at least stick up for himself and actually, if he does have an innocent side to the story, then give that side. And yeah. the first thing that comes out of his mouth is, "I am not a murderer." So that is like a really nice culmination to the, of the build up of this sequence, I think, um, and of course. We actually cut away. We don't get to see what he says after that point. You know, we, Simon comes in and talks to him, and he, we, we hear enough that he's, he's willing to talk to him now, but we don't actually get to hear what he actually says about the night, about the case. We see that they've got some new security footage of them, like the you know the uncle and the two two boys hanging out um, in one of the stores. Oh, there's nothing nothing in it. So I'm uh, 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 incriminating is what I'm trying to say, uh, but. Uh, it's like okay, so they're building a timeline, but they want to do this recreation, this this reenactment of what what happened and sort of drive him from location to location and he's presum presumably going to tell the story of what happened next episode but of course the added bit of tension here which makes this cliffhanger at the end of the episode so good is that that means they have to go to where hussein and everyone else lives and they have to go through those areas which as we have been seeing are a riot zone and full of yeah. angry people and they're going to drive someone the who's, who's a suspect you know like they're going to see someone with them and they're going to hear they're doing a reenactment and go wait this is one of them then this is the guy who killed our you know muhammad like yeah who's become a martyr so correct me i mean maybe maybe i'm jumping the gun here but this feels super dangerous to me like taking him out to that uh, area yeah i imagine the next episodes could be very intense yeah i i am i'm looking forward to it i, I feel like we're going to get a really action-packed episode <laughs> You know, yeah. I, I, in the way that this episode has action, thinking episode two is, is a action-packed episode. 
uh i'm i'm excited because you know, there's a bit of a, a blurb at the start where we see a b- bunch of news footage sort of explaining the state of the the country and what's happening mm-hmm. in terms of the actual like conflict and tanks are all they're getting... talking about rockets being launched too um i didn't really follow all that but uh yeah i don't necessarily understand everything they said in this section um but uh, it, it gives you an idea that the tensions are high and that you know we're, we're they're on the verge of war what, when simon says that at one point uh yeah. because of this uh so no, and obviously one of the subplots, a couple of subplots here. One is that they are dealing with the the lawyers, but the guy who you know it's his job to like sort of have relations with the family, the victim's family, goes to see Hussein, and Hussein again is very confrontational with him, doesn't want to talk to him, you know, demands to know like who who the suspects are, is angry that he's not been given information, uh, but you know the guy like does what he can and like gives him his number and says look we're trying to do this the best we can and we're trying to yeah. keep things calm and he's like uh, and he's saying it's offended almost that he thinks you've just been sent here to make me c- to calm down he's like no i'm, I'm i misphrased that like, that's not really what i meant but yeah. we are trying to keep everything calm like the, everything like everyone I, around I think you it, i think it's a nice follow-up from the episode where we got before where hussein said that we're everybody was trying to keep the situation under a certain type <laughs> of control and he is but he is so full of grief and he's like, no, this is how I want things to go. I want my son to be with me and buried over here. And because he didn't listen to uh, what was suggested, it it ended up that he lost his son and like his son had to be buried in a place that he didn't want in a public place where everybody was around. Yeah, essentially what you're and saying there is... basically like... What, what, you're, what you're saying there is, is that there's already proof to him that what the police are suggesting is actually the right thing to do with him in mind. Right. And, and because Hussein, even though he's surrounded by an angry mob and, and just these, both his other son and I don't know if it's his brother or something, is just <clears throat> constantly just in each ear telling him, don't trust the cops, yeah, because don't listen to them, they're not on your side. Because when he gets the call to do the reenactment and he says that they're going to do this, mm-hmm. uh, like, the son, the other son, is like, hey we shouldn't let it go to trial like he's like no we should murder them we you know we should get to them and murder them that should not be like you know a justice thing that should not be in the courts that should not be jail time yeah because they think because they're they're jewish kids they're going to be let go like how long until we just let them go yeah um so you know and again hussein's reaction to this is like what sort of thuggish language is that like no like hussein despite the fact that obviously he should be very upset is as level-headed as he can be yeah and he's trying his best but and- he, he's fighting it though because we've seen him be a part of the mob too and you can see it kind of getting to him because he he's angry and he has every right to be angry but he's still not angry to the point where he is uh, not level-headed but you the, know? Qu- the question i have then is well, what about next episode then, when he wants this reenactment to go through and let it play out because he believes that that'll help the investigation? Yeah. The angry mob, I don't see going along with this. I don't see them because even in that scene, like his brother nope. and his son look at each other with these eyes, like, "Yeah, we're not going to let this happen. Like, we are going to cause trouble." And I assume they're going to bring police protection. There's going to probably going to be like a a little escort, but right. I can't imagine that it's going to go smoothly. Uh, because we end the episode with like they're on their way like they're in the car and they're on their way like Avishy is in the back seat and there's a camera on him to capture everything he's going to say so there's also the the scene where um the where hussein is pushing debris away for a uh like a bulldozer to come through and try to clean up the area so that they can drive through safely too Mm. and everybody who's with Hussein is just on the sidelines, like with their arms crossed, like just watching him. He's the only one working to help the police, basically, at this point. Mm. Like nobody is really there to assist him, even though he's the one <laughs> who's like they're supposed to be surrounding and yeah. helping. Well, it goes it goes back again to the idea of like, uh, do they really care about Hussein and Mohammed, or do they just want no. this for their cause? And the idea that like he. Like, if he's not following their company line, as it were, then they're mad at him now. And that's, yeah. it, it just, it kind of shows their true colours. So, yeah, it's it's a, it's a really great little moment, actually. Although, I must admit, I did crack a little joke to myself about uh, picking up graphite as he was picking up a piece of, like, concrete. Um, 
I couldn't help but think of it. Man, I love Chernobyl. Chernobyl what City. a good show. Good. We'll do our anniversary set of reviews next year. Uh, we'll just watch it again and <laughs> talk about it one more time. It's been one year since Chernobyl started. Let's, let's do it again. Yeah. Round two. Uh, or more like round six for me. I've already watched it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it maybe, maybe, hey, if we're lucky, maybe HBO will make Chernobyl 2 Tokyo Drift. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I saw that online. It's a bad joke. <laughs> oh, dear. It's a good one. But, um, no, I, 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 I dug this episode a lot. I, I think all the little subplots are really good. Um you know, because we, we see the whole hearing in the, the courtroom about arguing if, if not, like, they should get defense lawyers in immediately uh, or if they get some time to try and crack them first. And right. they, they only get 12 hours, but what I thought was interesting in this scene is that the, you know, the, the main dude that we've been following here, he actually, he kind of does all this stuff where he stands up and the, the other lawyer, the, 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 the guy who's arguing they should have defense lawyers in there, he basically implies that this defense guy is a shady individual who, who? Yeah, he was pretty funny actually. Yeah, he he's, he kind of accuses him of like defending like awful people and guilty people and like again, it was just this little slice of life moment where I just I completely got the 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 context in the scene of who this is mm-hmm. and the sort of person that he is. Um, yeah, it was really good. He was really quick and uh, really sharp witted, and it was a uh, it was funny. I really liked that scene because the guy stands up and says, "Oh, you're threat, you're you're you're." you know in danger of a, a defamation lawsuit here and he's like okay i'll move on then but like he's made his point he's made his point that this guy's like a sleazeball who defends yeah you know criminals so yeah it was, it was a nice little touch nice little touch um but like I, said, I like how focused this was i think all the scenes with abishi were really well performed yeah i really like his reaction shots both when simon walked in the room and when uh his therapist did too yeah yeah because he's shocked when he sees her is quite great and like I say, when he breaks down, is a phenomenal moment. And so, yeah, maybe he is actually somewhat innocent. Maybe he was there, and maybe felt powerless to, to like stop it, or you know, like because I mean, if you're with two guys who are willing to beat someone and burn them alive, are you feeling confident enough about stopping them? Like, are you worried about what they'll do to you if you? I mean, Vishay, from what we see, him, has never seemed like a a very strong character, like strong yeah, will. Very timid. He's a very timid person yeah so i i can i can almost imagine him in my head just kind of like staring and like panicking a little bit in the inside and not knowing what to do as as these two yeah. do this awful thing so yeah we'll see we'll see you next episode uh what to do with this looking this forward to it reenactment. i am looking forward to this next episode i'm really looking forward to this next one me uh, too i i'm really enjoying this show uh quite a bit actually but it is uh, uh i'm dreading but looking forward to the next episode, which is a really good sign. Yeah, and uh, so just as we wrap this up here, so uh, thank you very much for for watching our, our course and listening. But um, we, I think, I don't know if it was on this, but we joked a little while ago that Tara was kind of the unofficial HBO co-host for like reviewing TV. Oh, yeah. And Tara responded with that, says, "Yeah, but I mean, it's like I'll be doing Watchmen, except it's turned out now that Tara will be doing the the Watchmen reviews with me." So. <laughs> So yes, you are basically. I'm gonna the H- watch them anyway. Yeah, you are the HBO <gasps> co-host, but the exception of the Deuce, which I am doing with Connor. In fact, the first review of season three just went up earlier tonight at the time of recording. So okay, exciting. Go check that out. That's a good show. HBO makes good shows typically. Even ones with Franco in it. Even ones with Franco in it. He's actually pretty good in it. He's not the best part of it. Maggie Gyllenhaal is a powerhouse in that show. She's great. <clears throat> I never watched the Deuce, but I do like her a lot. Uh, honestly, see once, it, see once it's done, I mean, the whole thing's only like 20-something episodes, because it's like see, 8 episodes, 9 episodes, and I think this season's 8 episodes again, so it's not a long show. You could you could do just the whole binge thing. It. Yeah, you could just binge the whole thing. Uh, it would work really well. Uh, it's really good. But yeah, go check out me and Connor's reviews for The Deuce. Uh, we, we had some good conversations about season 1 and 2, so season 3's on now if you're interested in that. That'll be on the same feed as this, on the audio feed, uh, as is The Righteous Gemstones, which is the comedy drama that me and Tara are also reviewing right now. Uh, and as previously mentioned, Watchmen's coming next month, and me and Tara will be doing that. So look forward to, to bam, 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 bam. Uh, But you can, of course, rate the podcast on your podcast app, Apple Podcasts being the most common one, and give us five stars, helps more people find us. Uh, you can, of course, get us on the Twitters at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. Tara, what can they do to support us uh, with their, their monies? Uh, so you can check out our Patreon page patreon.com slash TV. you can donate as little as a dollar per month and that dollar gets you 
bonus episodes of other shows we do so uh check it out yeah uh and you can uh it's not quite the deuce or 42nd street but you can pay to get me to watch a movie if you're rich enough for it uh and i'll do it and review it so (laughs) we also have movie suggestion pages too (laughs) we do we do we do which only costs you the one dollar uh well they cost more than that five that's the five dollar tier yeah to go into the vault and the the crypt reactor. The reactor yeah oh, okay it's a five dollar five dollar tier there you go uh so yeah um but that is us that is that has been almost cancelled that has been our boys episode six if they'll remember the right number this time uh so thank you once again for watching or listening we always appreciate it keep watching tv guys have you got any vanilla <laughs>